Somerville right now is one of the most eco-friendly cities in the country. Nice, man. Yeah. Shouts out to you. And so I'm wondering, and I see it in Cambridge too, and I see it in Boston. How do you apply some of the policies on a local level to a national level? And who's doing it? You know what I'm saying? Because I think one issue that I don't know if you guys would agree that kids our age actually care about would be climate change. Yeah, definitely. We're on the same page? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I would agree too. I mean, we see, uh, I mean, people your age and younger uh, students participating in climate strikes and climate march- marches, advocating for climate action and climate equity. Well, it's like trendy to yeah. do that if you're our age. Like, yeah. Fight for the world. But, I mean, it's it, it's one of the reasons when we think about some of the candidates, uh, whether you support uh, Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren or the other candidate, who gives voice to those types of concerns, the concerns of the of the generation that will lead you know, our communities, our state, our, our country in the future. Um, and you, how, do, how do we address that? How do we give voice or... Um, elevate that from a local level. Well, it's interesting because um, I am a have a passionate interest in cities, not just because I'm here, but, you know, urban policy and cities and city regions. And if you look around the world, it's been at the city region level uh, where municipalities and regions have set the standard uh, for climate action, mostly in places like Europe, but uh, coming lately and and with a lot more energy is in here in the United States because climate change is an existential threat to us all. Um, so it, it, it good thing about being in Somerville is people not only cerebral, they lead with their values. Um, we developed locally uh, our own sort of Green New Deal uh, called Somerville Climate Forward, where we looked at certain action areas around, you know, transportation systems, um, building assets, uh, um, you know, other, other for, uh, our own city operations and other policies to, uh, have a think about a more not just eco-friendly more cleaner way greener way of living and uh and 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 building a community we all think of in the future so uh, it's easier to set that stand at the local level even though you have a president uh and his support is a white house that actually is just fully abdicated their all responsibility to take on climate change uh but there's great opportunity and necessity for you to to make those certain decisions like get bigger bike paths or um I'll, I'll be honest i don't know the specific stuff you've done i just know that somerville is like green as hell man mm-hmm. but um were, were those expensive decisions to make and then on a global level will it also be expensive i mean not global national so a couple of um practical things we did that weren't expensive at all was uh, to think about how do we shift mobility behavior away from the automobile to more biking walking um, public transportation buses, even though not all buses are electric, still they're, they're cleaner, lower carbon, more equitable forms of public transportation. To do that, you need to make sure those options, biking, walking, public transportation, buses are, are, are the easy choice. You're not just forced by convenience to be in the automobile. And that's important in the most densely populated city uh, in New England, the most congested traffic region in the United States. So, for instance, over the last uh, 16 plus years, we've built uh, more than 50 miles of bike lanes and share roads. We've built dedicated bike lanes. Now, that's more of a reallocation. Some of it's new investments. Some of it's a reallocation of investments rather than just uh, creating a, an environment and a culture for cars. Because if you do that, that's what you'll get to, to invite that type of mobility uh, behavior uh, or and you know putting down cheap paint to have a dedicated uh, 24-7 bus priority lane on um, Broadway and Winter Hill, which has had great impact. Those type of things are very inexpensive options that have huge quality of life impacts, safety impacts, and help us move towards our sum of a climate forward uh, uh, um, um, goals as well. And, the th- and and we think about fleet op- operations and you know, our energy sources, you know, fueling our operations and more renewables and cleaner forms of energy, those are sometimes slightly but incrementally more expensive. It's becoming cheaper, but the benefits are huge over the long run. It's an investment. So, yeah, it's not, you know, some investments in lives, but they're very practical things we can do today and at the city level, going back to your other question, that we can do this at the standard of what that culture, that behavior should be. And we've shown with very, very immediate uh, Again, pragmatic investments or inter- interventions on the assets that we own. Like, we can't control the T. But we do control our roadways. 
we do control the public realm so we can think about how do we plan a city for people, not just automobiles. And that's important because even around our zoning, we can think about what are the buildings in this, all this development that's happened in Somerville, what are the values those assets will incorporate. We know that more than two thirds of our carbon footprint come from greenhouse gas emissions caused from our building assets and more than a third from our transportation system. So we, although, you know, we don't control the state building code. We have the ability in our zoning, which we did, for instance, to make all new commercial buildings have to be lead platinum. Uh, and to control a lot of our public realm to, again, not just incentivize, invite more of a culture of biking, walking, and public transportation. Greater investments like the Green Line extension, and those are huge investments, but they're going to pay big dividends, too. And it's not so much a cost. The Green Line extension, for instance, in Somerville, will take 25,000 motor vehicles off the streets every day. But it also, over the long term, adds $3 billion in new economic activity to the Commonwealth that don't exist today. It helps us build more than 10,000 housing units in a region that is in a housing crisis. It helps us create more than 30,000 jobs where people... Are dying to live and work right near i mean work right where they live so you know our investments we need to we need to play that out over the long term uh and a lot of times we'll hear from the development community and others well it costs a lot to do that you know sometimes it's a it the, we have to navigate a more difficult path but how we think about how we build those assets how we plan for the future uh it's a little bit more work uh, but if, we, if we're acting today with an eye tomorrow, those investments pay off. They return a positive at the end of the day and help us meet our climate action.